What's good? Shout out to the real sports fans, real boxing fans. Let's get it. Listen, listen, this is what we do over here. We keep it 1,000 over here. No agendas, no nothing. We keep it doing. We got our favorite. I personally got my favorite, you know, fighters or whatever. But like I say, dog, I don't lead nobody astray. In real life, if... If if I see something wrong, I'm a, I feel it's my duty to tell you. So on his same channel, I can't sugarcoat nothing. Jamal Charlo. Let's look at Jamal Charlo. We're going to look at the psyche of a boxer, right? You always can tell what the psyche of a boxer and how confident they really, really are. Because a lot of things is just bravado, right? Jamal Charlo. Let's go back to December 2018. But let's, you know, let's take it back to 2015. 2000 I think he won his title in 2015 against K9. I was looking at the Charlo brothers. We talking about the middleweight champion, not Jermel, cuz that's another story. They two different boxers, different personalities, different style. We talking about 160 current champion. Back in 154 he won the title from K9 brothers. I like I, I like his poise. I like he had power. I was like, "Yo, he might be better than Jermel." And it was in um at the time um J-Rock, shout out to Philly 215267. J-Rock was the guy like the the known you know it's always a guy not necessarily the boogeyman but the high risk where the reward is where they they take a little longer he was the ibf mandatory and i was really anticipating that fight coming into the fight we wasn't sure who was going to win he knocks out first of all the fight got delayed because i think he got surgery on his eyes lasik surgery jamal charlo right so then um, fast forward a few months, the fight finally got made. I forget who was on the undercard. I think it was, um, Abner Morris and Jesus Quay or something like that. He knocks out J-Rock in a beautiful uppercut. I was like, wow. And the fight was amazing. It was going back and forth. Jamal Charlos dropped him with a power jab. So after that J-Rock fight, um, that was his last fight at 154. The, the boxing world was on notice. Like, yo, this dude is the truth. Like, yo, yo, he's bigger. What's going to happen when he fight, you know, Triple G, blah, 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 this. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually he got the um, interim title with that dude. I think he get Highland. Now, fast forward, he fought Korobov. Same fight his brother fought Tony Harrison in December. I personally thought the fight could have been a draw. He, he came out late or Korobov actually winning so boom okay that happens see a lot of people don't realize as a fighter fighters are hard on themselves any human mostly is hard on themselves so even if you get certain victories if if it's not dominant if it's close it does something to you um psychologically especially if the, especially if the level of competition isn't as high as other competition because naturally you're going to see how do I rank myself against the best in the division, which at 160 we know is Demetrius Andre, Triple G, and Canelo. So he has that victory. I'm sorry if I'm going on because this shit, man, you know, I, I just break shit down. I keep it 1,000. Check it out. and So that way you can figure out, so, figure out, you know, fights not getting made because you can see their team don't really have as much confidence in them. So he struggles with that one. Then he fought Brandon Adams like, I think it was like three months ago. And kind of struggled on that one. That was the same night I'd done a live on my other channel. Um, He struggled in a sense. He didn't dominate him because they was like, the dude was supposed to fight Triple G first. But then it's like, oh, Triple G going to fight him. And then he fought him and they said, oh, he's a good opponent. He kind of struggled. He didn't, he didn't give him knocked out. Now, the reason why I keep bringing up knockouts, a lot of boxers profile and who are whoever they are uh, a lot of boxers believe that they're gonna knock everybody out and once they stop getting those knockouts they start to have doubts too so that's another way for a fighter to start doubting himself that's why as a fighter you shouldn't put so much emphasis on knockouts it's cool to go for it but don't force it and don't, it's not sometimes it's not even good to even brand yourself as this big ko puncher um also too power has a way of um making people drunk where you start to think that it's everything about power but when, as soon as you don't knock somebody out and somebody got good defense and they hitting you back it's like oh shit i have i didn't work on my other um game i didn't work on my boxing i didn't work on my foot moving while i was in the gym so now i seen that he's supposed to fight in december first of all showtime why would you approve this fight 
you 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 gonna approve this fight? Why? I don't know. Why would you approve this fight? Um, Dennis Hogan. I didn't see the fight, but I think he, they said he supposedly beat um, Jaime Munguia, 154 WBO. So now he's going to fight uh, Jamal Charlo. Why Jamal Charlo, if his team was really confident, he he he, he act like he didn't even really want to press for the Canelo fight. He was like quiet about it, like closed mouths don't get fed. So, okay, he's fighting Dennis Hogan. So what's happening to him now is he's not improving. So I expect him to probably beat Dennis Hogan. So now if he struggle against this level of competition, he's going to degrade. Like, he's not going to get better. So when he finally get in a situation where somebody is the mandatory and they force him to fight, you never know. They might make Boo Boo the mandatory and force him to fight Boo Boo or, you know, whatever up and coming middleweight there is. So I say this, man, his Jamal Charlo and his team confidence is shook right now. This It shows it shows in a fight. And with them fighting only once every six or seven months, there's no way for him to really even get better. I mean, I'm sure he in the gym. He don't look like he blew up in two weight, but he a big guy. He look like he'd probably eventually end up at 175, one, definitely 168. So his confidence is shook right now, yo. Um, if I was his manager, I have him fighting three times a year, maybe four, just to stay active. Um, even if it's on an undercard or like pay-per-view fights because... At this rate, man, it's just it just a fizzle out because in order to be the best of the best, you can have a title, but it's like oh nobody's gonna pay attention to you, especially when you're not fighting nobody. Like come on, dog! Like nobody's gonna tune in and stuff. Showtime wasting their money, son. Like Showtime is an enabler, and and it's crazy too because they losing all their big fights to Fox. Showtime enabling, they don't understand the power that they have. Why would you spend your money on this Dennis Hogan fight? And you can spend your money on, let's say, Boots Ennis. He's young. And you don't even got to spend that much. You can do a primetime event with Boots Ennis versus, like, Sergey Lipinets or Boots Ennis versus somebody else. I know he on the undercard this Saturday. But y'all feel what I'm saying on this one? I, I want to get your thoughts on Charlo, man. Because, like I said, his team and, and himself, his their, their confidence is not the same. Like, you can just tell by the by the opponents that they picking. Like, it's just, it's just like, it's no development. And... What if he happened to lose to Dennis Hogan? Then, you get what I mean? Like, he might as well just go straight for um, Demetrius Andre. If you lose, you lose. As long as you put up a good fight. That's what Sean Porter, Sean Porter, man, he's like right now showing the true example of this doing your best and still gaining a profile. This is how I was back in the day. People didn't really care as much. Sean Porter done that. Now, he got more buzz off that fight damn near than Earl because people are like, wow, Sean Porter really brung it. So, Fight Demetrius Andre, fight somebody, son, because you digressing, yo. Like you gotta, you gotta step your game up, like son, like, 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 yo. Before you lose to a cupcake, if you're gonna lose, at least lose to a high level of competition. Or I bet you they banking on Dervianchenko, IBF versus WBC. Would they even make that fight? Say if Dervianchenko win it, because I know it's not a rematch clause because it was a, um, a purse bed situation, a Mando situation. So. That's the ideal fight, Dervianchenko. If Dervianchenko win today, they can make that fight at the end of the year. Be going to fight Dennis Hogan, or they make it early next year. That's what we want to see. Because, but is Ronnie Shields going to take it? Because they see he's not getting knockouts down. Um, he's not at the bigger puncher like they were saying. But yeah, this I, I, I just want your thoughts on that, man. I don't I don't want to see no Dennis Hogan fight, yo. And um, it just gets frustrating because um. Yeah, man, it is what it is, man. It's your boy, man. Like I said, to support the channel. If you like the real, you like the real sports talk, we speak a thousand over here. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, um, and also leave a comment. I'm out of here.